Welcome everybody to the DKNQ Lifestyle Podcast with me, Marcus, and this section is self-management, coping, and problem solving. Yeah, so, oh sorry, in this domain there are five areas. There is difficulties achieving goals, poor coping, irresponsible lifestyle, impulsive decision making, and addictions. I had all of these. So we're going to start off with difficulties achieving goals and there is one, two, three, four, five, six sections. Uh, There is some evidence to suggest this is an area that requires some work and exploration for Marcus. Marcus was undertaking a BTEC, I don't, it's a BTEC music course at one stage in his life. That's wrong. So what it is about probation, yeah, they get things wrong. So there was a, there was that in there. They were telling me, it said that I'd worked in like McVitie's biscuit factory. Mm, Um... I'd uh, hit a girl over the head with a laminate girlfriend. Hit my girlfriend over the head with a laminate piece of laminate. Uh, I'd pulled a gun out on someone in a takeaway, and there was something else. And it wasn't me. It turns out this person has just got the same name as me. I don't know if it means both names or my surname or first name. I don't know, but it's not right. So I've never done no beauty music course or those other things. Um. At one stage in his life, so if I said that again, Marcus was undertaking a BTEC music course at one stage in his life, but he left this course halfway through. This shows a level of inability to complete things which start, which he started, which is not true. But it is true. I do like not finish things, but I haven't done the BTEC course, so they haven't got it right in terms of what they've linked it to. But I did have a great difficulty. I didn't have the ability to finish things. I just never did. I just start and I just leave. Or I'd just start something and not, never finish it. That's it, simple as. Uh, this pattern was seen again in a mechanics course, which Marcus started and left after four months. That's true. That was me. I did a mechanics course. Marcus has had a sporadic employment history, according to his Oasis report from the 24th of uh, was that May 2016, which is true. There is also some evidence showing that Marcus has the ability to achieve goals. Marcus completed a fitness instructor course at Huddersfield Leisure Centre, achieving a level two f- f- certificate for this. I did level three as well. Uh, Marcus also left school with several GCSEs. Uh, Marcus has self-reported on his Oasis interview on the 24th of January 2016 that he has difficulty keeping jobs because the shit. Simple as that. It's just not, you know, I was still in that lifestyle. I wasn't ready to break away. You used to making pee and you're not making pee. That's that. Uh, Paul Corpin. Uh, and his one, two, three, four bullet points here. Marcus's carrying of and use of weapons provides evidence for the presence of this risk, risk factor. It shows a desensitization to violence and that Marcus feels weapons are a, requ- are a required item to carry for one's protection. Carrying weapons also suggests one is willing to use these, thus showing a poor way of coping with conflict. Forget it, we'll get into it, yeah? I've seen a video on... Um, if, I think he's called Farron Alex Paul or something anyway, yeah, um, on Instagram. And he deals with knife crime, like, to death. My man's being jucked up. He's been, you know, he's doing big, big work around the London area trying to get these youths away from this drug uh, gang thing and this knife thing. So there was a video and it said, or oh, maybe it was Bobby Kasanga, actually, one of these two. And then I seen it on that like, London street crime Instagram's page. I seen it all on Instagram. But it was saying about, it, it just said on the screen, as it's showing you like uh, a security camera, CCTV footage from inside a takeaway. It looked like a takeaway anyway. And there's a man stood, well, uh, a guy stood there with a girl, a male stood with a female. And it, the caption said like on the screen, um, like basically would it have ended differently if he didn't have a knife? So anyway, like, you know, you're watching several seconds, 10 seconds. It seemed like a long time for like Instagram. Do you know what I mean? Of like, just a guy, like a young lad, like just messing about. A girl sat down on like a stool or something. He's just stood there kind of just whatever. He's got like his back. You're looking at him from the side and he's like a door. And then his door just bursts open, yeah? And obviously these youths are carrying some big, long shank of malankas. And obviously he's like, boom, but what is his back tight? His thing. They both got like big Rambo ones. And obviously they're doing the, the knife dance, like, you know, like, like um, a bit like fencing. And uh, there's two of them. 
like coming through the door, trying to come through the door, cause, like coming through, like using the door's protection, this and that. He's got like a flipping stool in one hand, and he's like using it as like a kind of like defensive mechanism thing, and he's got the, uh, you know, he's going forward with the shank, like, and um, in the end, nothing happened. Alhamdulillah, nothing happened to any of them, yeah. And you can hear him say, "Let's go, let's go." Do you know what I mean to the girl? And he like sheaths the thing and gets off because obviously them kids have got off as well. They're over geezers. And obviously, if he didn't have a knife, I think them guys weren't just coming to like mess about. You know, these guys are putting it all in, all 50 inches of it. Do you know what I mean? Like, that sounds a bit... But yeah, it's heavy, man. So it's saying... So basically, the lifestyle that man's living, and what I'm trying to say is, I never carried a knife for going out robbing or anything, or like, I, I had the knife for protection. And I would, anyway, I had the knife for protection, basically. Using it, yes, I would have, because I'm not having it for like, I'm, I'm, I'm using it for protection. Do you know what I mean? And if I have to kind of, you know, but it's not about that anyway, yeah? Not on them things there. But what I'm trying to say is, I could roll around on my own and get to where I'm going without any trouble. But if someone stepped to man, then run out back out without really wanting to use. But if they don't understand that man's a user, it could get mad. Um, so that's what I'm saying. So it's not about, so basically I don't live that lifestyle now. Don't advocate for it. Armless. Harmless and armless. Unarmed. Um, cause it's dangerous out, in, out here on the streets, man. Like you can't even like, can't just, like disarm the, the youths as well, yeah? Because like I say, don't mean that they're ops disarmed. You know them ones. So, you know, you can end up with two people that if both have got knives or if one hasn't got a knife, one, one them come, end up with their or like, if he's got a knife, he can back them off like he's mad. And then vice versa, because then he might, he might go on the attacks, so obviously he was on the defence, the one that we're looking at. It's not to say that he's always the victim. Um, So it gets messy, it gets mad when you're in that lifestyle. And it's not easy for these kids to get out of because they're just kids, they don't know any better, they don't know anything different. And the lifestyle and the girl and everything's formed around kind of being something or someone. And like I say, it's more wider spread now as with the pods when I'm talking about like um, these gangster tourists, do you know what I mean? Um, so there's just bigger, there's just more, it's more all more consuming. Um, and yeah, so it's just, it's just heavy, it's just heavy anyway. But yeah, um, but yeah, as it says, a required item to carry for one's protection. So not that I couldn't de-escalate conflict. Um, I couldn't de-escalate conflict. I learned that there. I couldn't at all, plain and simple. But what I'm trying to say is, oh, no, not what I'm trying to say is, but what I will say is, as an older man now, I think it'd be easy to de-escalate conflict because I think we've all got lives now. We've moved on. Um, Obviously, youths are the ones to be more, obviously, man's got no fingers, no youths or anything, or anything but... It'd be the youths that you can't talk to because they don't listen. They can't. They haven't got the ability to listen. They haven't got the capacity. Like that bit in their brain that, that where they need to listen, isn't there. Isn't formed. They just don't listen. So, I don't know. What you, what the what they're gonna do there? But anyway, not to digress too much. Uh, Marx has spoken in small groups about how this image, oh sorry, how his image impacts his behaviors and thought processes. Marx has shared that if he feels weak, he feels scared slash threatened and this can often result in violence this suggests suggests that being vulnerable is something which marcus struggles with and merits further exploration in his therapy groups now this word vulnerability as i've spoken about many times is just it would just mad because you don't hear it day to day you do hear it more now but then like growing up you never heard it like that and then when you did hear it, I associated it with like some NSPCC advert, some child like behind the sofa or something and like, man's a big man, like man, carrying behind no sofa. You know what I mean? Like, you know, but yeah, so it was hard to get my head around and I didn't understand it and no one could explain it in my language. And it's only when I was reading a book by Brene Brown, she's got a TED talk still, but I haven't watched that. Um, and this book is called Daring Greatly. But it's a bit big, it's a, Big long title, but if you put Daring Greatly, Brene Brown, uh, B R E N E, um, I think it's pronounced Brene. Um, 
But yeah, if you look at that, and then she's got like research on shame and vulnerability. And it was in the vulnerability bit I've spoken about before, where there was like 20 odd bullet points. And one of them said, uh, the feeling I get before I punch someone, and it like literally knocked me for six. Like you've heard me speaking about the group, uh, sorry, the community room, which we used to go into first Monday to Friday before we went into groups. Um, and it was before that, so it must have been like early, like half seven, quarter past seven. I'm surprised. It might have been earlier because I think we went on the yard. They let us out for exercise at half seven in the morning for half an hour. Or maybe 20 past, 20 past seven and coming at 10 to eight because eight o'clock was when group uh, thoughts and feelings was, which is the community group where obviously you shared your thoughts and your feelings, which is, like I said, that's the way I shared my work, which is my thoughts, which is my workings, uh, my processes, how I process what's going on and what's going on for me and how I was moving forward. But anyway, um, so yeah, um, it, it um, hit me hard. I thought, whoa, like the feeling I get before I hit someone, I thought, what? I'd assumed that's me, that's bad man me. Like, <clears throat> I assumed that that was my adrenaline. Like, I didn't realise that I was scared. Like, I kind of knew I was scared, but I didn't realise that the word vulnerability, that's what that was, like that mixture of everything that's going on, kind of like, not really adrenaline on that, but it probably would be adrenaline, because adrenaline does kick in when you're scared, because it should be like, Saber tooth tiger, scared, all of a sudden you can run faster than you can ever run, jump, high, climb that tree, boop, 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 or whatever, yeah, or fight it off. But I didn't realise that was vulnerability and it like knocked me. Obviously, you know, I went into thoughts and feelings and started dropping what I just read and like how it's just changed my whole world view. Do you know what I mean? Almost like positive trauma. <laughs> yeah, it changed my whole world view and just, I just thought, wow, like I couldn't actually believe what I was reading. Uh, and it has helped me so much to make me realise that, yeah, in the moments I, I am vulnerable, I do feel vulnerable. So even when I speak about, like, when I mentioned, uh, read about the crime, how they said it played out, like, at the time, you know, I did feel that, like, vulnerability and that, like, and then what I do. So when I feel vulnerable, I feel like I've lost control. There's no control, like, and when things are out of control in your life, you, you feel unsafe and scared. So then it's like, what do you do to get that control back? Obviously, if it's with individuals, then you will be um, become intimidating, aggressive, violent. <coughs> to dominate, because the dominator, the one that's dominant, is the controller. That's the one who will dictate what's happening. So then it's to exert to death. You know, the ones there. Basically a bit like a, a what's that thing called in fucking Fantastic Beasts? That you anyway, fucking ob obelisk, not obelisk. You know what I'm saying? You just got to go off mad and just control everything, smash everything down in your image. So yeah, hit me, hit me hard. And the image thing. So yeah, obviously man's got long hair, whatever now. It's different now, because obviously in prison, it wasn't like how it is out here, where everyone's got all these mad hairstyles and that like, these days, like especially like the youths. Obviously there's no youths like that in prison, like where I was anyway. So everyone's just still got like the bug standard trims, which is like, Short back and sides, fades, whatever they do, which I had at first when I first went in. Well, I didn't have a finger, I had, I had like a fade a little bit, but I had a bit more hair on top and it, it kept getting more on top. And then I just stopped getting it cut and I just let it grow. It was an afro kind of thing. Then I thought, you know what, fuck it, I'm going to grow it. After I had this group on in, uh, on image, because obviously people pull it up because what it is, you see this, not this one, because this is the last one because it's got the end bit in what she's put, but you didn't have the end bit in because I hadn't done that work yet. So this is what she did after I'd completed therapy in their eyes they thought oh you know what he's not got much work to do because obviously they have talks about you in your like a pre-board so they'll talk about you before your board comes up to see where you need to work on to see if you've picked out yourself or if your peers have picked out what you need to work on next um so yeah you give them you're supposed to give them your or, or you're not supposed to they would like it if you would give them what's called your therapy report or your assessment report, the one that they re originally, which will have these. This is basically this bit what I'm reading now. Because um, you'll get an, an updated one kind of all the time. But to give them just your assessment one will, will be fine because then it's got all that like, your crime in and, and whatever. So you just know what people's in for, how they've digested it. Um, but in the end, obviously, you just need to know what someone's crime is. And then you can, you, you've got this mindset already, like where it's like, boom. Yeah, they've got difficulty achieving um, goals. That's your irresponsible lifestyle. That you know, that's antisocial. But you've got this like mindset already where you're categorizing, bam, 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 bam. 
excuse me, like analytical mind, um, like level seven and, and uh, above. Um, so yeah, so you give everyone this, so everyone knows what your issues are. Do you know what I mean? But not everyone gives it because they might be in for some funny crime or something funny might be in it. Do you know what I mean? And they don't feel comfortable passing it because obviously what, regardless what this is, like in prison, my crime's acceptable. It's an acceptable crime. Like mad. But there's some crimes obviously that you may know that aren't acceptable. But obviously different, it's a different type of prison. So people allow it, but they still don't want that stigma because they want to be in with the boys. They don't want you like, to know that you've done X, Y, and Z. Because, all right, then in the therapy group, man's, like, engaging. But outside the space, man not really want to play, like, snooker with you. Man not want to play TT with you. Man not want you in the cell playing fucking Call of Duty. Do you know what I mean? Man not want you, like, doing, like, a circuit with us. Man not want you, like, on the food boat. Man don't want you in the gym, like, on man's gym, like, gym thing, whatever we call that, gym boat. Do you know what I mean? Like, obviously, it's busy and that man. Bare man, five, six, seven, eight, nine, man are fucking doing <laughs> chest rapid or something. Do you know what I mean? I mean, so it's gonna be pressure for you. You know, the ones there, you might have to do, like, cause there might be another like kind of like wronging on there, and you've got to defaultly go with them because you're know, outcast kind of thing. But so it go, dynamics in it. Um. So yeah. So in this group, obviously, I uh, began to realize about the fear that I always used to have, like growing up, like, and I thought, mm, well, what if I did just like grow too lean up air and then like get straight and have it come to the side. I thought, nah, that's mad because man had ripped the piss out of me. That's what I didn't want. So we, even I'm getting this fade, obviously the fade worked for me, didn't it? It looked all right. Everyone else had one and the girl liked it. You know, the one's there. So that was it. That's the part, part and parcel. Like you see a man with a fade, like mixed race, man, you know what kind of life he's living. Like, you know, it's kind of whatever. Like it's just all, so it's all part of the image because you know what life is living. It fits in. Do you know what I mean? You wouldn't have, for me personally, looking at me, you'd have assumed I not got it wrong. You know, the one's there. Um, and that's with like, most people at that time and I thought about doing something else and I thought right it is true like this image thing like how you look because why I don't I just wear some like slipknot t-shirt and some I don't know some fishnet type gloves and you know I don't know dye my hair super black and put on some black lipstick and some black eye or whatever it's called you know what I mean and put on some baggy old black jeans you know what I mean and some big old black boots and have some chains on there, beer chains, dog leads and that. Because it's not my look. Like, man, I'd be like, I just lose the girl. The girl be thinking, eh? The man then would be like, what? Like, then me man be chatting me up, like, not chatting me up, that like, chatting me down, chatting behind me back and that. Like, I don't want that. No one wants that. You know what I mean? So it would be straight outcasting. So man wants to be in. It's the image. Because then I thought, oh, you could like switch my head. Head top with his head top, look the same. Switch it with his, look the same. Switch our clothes, look the same. Like I still look the same if I switch my clothes with these people. Like I still, it still fits, I still fit in and they fit in. Like no one's looking mad, like, um, or looking like an outcast or looking different. Everyone's look, everyone fits in. You know, the one's there. So yeah, so that's the image section there. Um, Marcus was involved in a situation with another resident on Endeavour and Marcus was upset and angry about what happened. Marcus dealt with this situation in a really pro-social way, speaking about the feelings it brought up in him with other residents in the community room, in his small groups and also with the resident who had upset him. Now that's probably the... That could be the guy by the thingy. That could be Steve by the fucking... On the food boat or that could, could be the guy with the games. My games. Not his games. I mean, he's a mad one. He's had bare entitlement things going on. Um, so it could be any of them. So yeah, it's just basically it's folding into how I'm better coping with when I am upset. Cause obviously they know, they're beginning to see my process of like, when I'm upset, I do this. And then it's not just like man's chatting because then they're seeing like, and then there's obviously eyewitnesses that are like chiming in. They've seen it at the time and then chiming in, in the community room or in the fucking group mainly where, um, they say, oh, but you was behaving like this. Like, even the people that I knew, like, that were my friends, and that they still challenge me, like, and bring it up, as they should have. And I'm glad that they have, because they're, for, like, see me <laughs> That's part and parcel why I am like I am, because if they weren't, like, <clears throat> if they weren't challenging me, then there wouldn't, there wouldn't have been no change, because it would have been acceptable. Because what is about group therapy? It's basically like a remodeling to fit in. 
you know what I mean? So that's why and I've come out of jail now and I fit out. I don't fit in with them groups of guys because how I talk, what I want to do, where I want to go, how I want to be defaultly isn't like what they're dealing with. You know, the ones there. So it's like, I'm a bit like, I'm a bit of an outcast now, but that doesn't matter. Do you know what I mean? Like, that's fine with me. To be almost repulsed to, or to repulse people is fine because... I'm happy with what I'm on. I'm on a pro-social thing. I'm on a law-abiding thing and I'm moving in a certain direction. You know the ones there? And that direction will only benefit me and loved ones and close ones. There's no... Let me just... Yeah, loved ones and close ones is just a beneficial thing. You know the ones there? So that's fine. But big up everybody. I'm a bridging them. I'm bridging you now. Uh, I always still think about honour, honour still in my prayers. You know what I mean? Like... Even the ops, them, man that would be classed as ops, man, still, they ain't my prayers, bruv. I pray for, like, them. I don't just, like, pray for, oh, please. I'm just like, yo, listen. I'm not saying what I say, but I pray for, man. Do you know what I mean? Like, I hope every man does their thing. I think that shows a lot still, being able to throw people that you've had disagreements with in your prayers. Like, I don't leave them out. Do you know what I mean? Even set family, they'll be in there that I don't get on with. They're in the prayers, like, just hoping that they look, you know what I mean? And the things go right. Um, character. Hey, good character still. Mark in, Marcus initiated a creative group on a Sunday afternoon on the community. It is a space where the residents meet up with each other and share things they have written, discussing the significance of the piece to them. This shows Marcus processing and expressing his feelings and taking the initiative to do this himself. So, uh, I think I mentioned it before, I had a, a poetry thing at first. So how that came about was I've gone to like one guy's yard, some more Rampton kids uh, yard, gone to his cell. And there's a poem up. He's just on his, he's just stood there. Uh, he's on his Xbox on the bed and whatever. Um, and there's a poem up on the wall. So I'm reading it. And he's like playing the thing. He's like, put the bed down. He's like, yo, yo, stop reading it then. <laughs> I'll stop reading it. Um, he goes out and then he read it like in a poetry type of way. Do you know what I mean? Like, certain emphasis, a certain flow, like he's reading it a certain type of way. <coughs> and I thought, bear in mind, I'm in like a, my mind's open now. Not from there, from just being on the TC, like anything. I am receptive and um, appreciative of everything and anything. Like, rah, look at the bricks. Look at the way they've done that. Why do you think they made the brick like that? <laughs> I'm appreciative of everything. Like, you know what I mean? Like, yo, the way, the way it's stitched. Like, I'm taking an interest in everything, yeah? And he's like, said that. And I thought, hmm. Because I just read it like I'm reading a letter. You know what I mean? <laughs> and he's like, getting it that like, and I thought, hmm. I said, yo, we should do a thing, you know? He's like, yo, set it up, innit? I'm like, no, you you set it up. Like, this is like, you've just done He's like, nah, man, set it up, man, set it up. Come in it, do you know what I mean? I thought, let me throw the feelers out, see what the man them are saying. So I said a couple of things, man are like straight away, boom, because not just me, my mind's open. Everyone's mind's open to all, to various degrees. You know what I mean? Some people take way more interest in me. Some people take way less interest in me. Do you know what I mean? Like people, some people are like, yo, yeah, I'll come, I'll come, I'll come. So I must have bossed it, yeah? Fucking I'll do a 40 man on the wing, up to 40 man. Sometimes a couple of cells were empty. Um, and then like 17 people turned up and I thought, right, that's like 50%. <laughs> I thought that's like nearly 50% of like, of the amount of people that was on the wing, do you know what I mean? Like I thought, jeez, that's a high number still. You know what I mean? Imagine someone like, putting on a performance and then like half the population turning up. 30 million people or whatever, like, huh? <laughs> Anyway. So yeah, so I had to write, I had, to, I, had, I had nothing. Do you know what I mean? Some people already had poetry there. Or people could bring like, obviously I bust it, so it's like, I have a write a piece, we'll do it for whatever day, or whatever time I said, Either write a piece, or you can come to this listen, or um, recite something that you already know. Because certain people had like people liked, uh, is it Rud Rudyard Kipling's If, and there was a next one that's pretty famous that's like about, and these ones are normally about in certain spaces. So that If and another one are normally in like re like uh, NA, which is Narcotics Anonymous, or uh, like Smart Recovery. Like they're normally in places because they kind of they inspire people. Do you know what I mean? So like people kind of know that one off by heart, and even just knowing that um, the AA is like, is it Serenity Prayer or something like, kind of thing. But anyway, 
So I had to write something. I wrote something called My Missus. Um, and that's what I brought. And yeah, so we came and we busted up once or twice. But a couple of times when it was on, I had to go to, um, what do you call it now? Basically, I'd either bought something or I had something sent in. I had to go collect it from reception. So the main reception of the prison, that's where, so they receive prisoners and receive parcels there. Uh, so you know, when you have to go down to reception, it's normally a buzz still because you're going to collect something done and have to f- sign your fucking, um, your prop card. Do you know what I mean? Which is like your property card, which you just got a, um, a log of everything that you've got, like salmon, not pink, salmon t-shirt, da, 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 da. they'll sign it, I'll sign it, come on, whatever date, do you know what I mean? Um, yeah. So anyway, so that kind of like fell through. People weren't, because people knew I weren't going to be there. People didn't turn up and it kind of fizzled out. Then I did a yoga thing. Um, me and a few people came down. Oh, because the same guy actually. I got the same, what the fuck was his name now? Some little wolves kid. Bit of a madman still. He ended up fucking off. He tried to fight some guy. He tried to fight that guy. He wants to fight, he was his neighbour. That dickhead with the fucking, uh, with the games and that. Like it's normally thinking, but he's just not on this very thing. Like he wasn't really receiving it like that. He wants to fight him that. Like, I half kind of stopped, but I half wanted him to as well. But other people was there, and they fully made sure it didn't happen. But my man shit his pants. Um, and I heard when he got, I don't know if he left, he got kicked off. But when he was on the mains, he'd like rob someone. It was like going around like, oh, my man there. Because I said, oh, yeah, no, my man. And they kind of like, ooh, <laughs> I'm trapped in fucking healthcare with him. These guys have like, like kind of like phased me out a little bit. Like, yeah, my man robbed uh, such and such, you know. Yeah, yeah, he did him bad, you know. And I thought, Oh shit! <laughs> I'm not even gymming it or nothing. I'm just fucking there still, and and then that tree henchman and there's that say bomber club. I thought anyway, you know how it goes. Anyway, you just got to just you know, just lines are drawn in it. They're on my man's side. They think I'm on his side, but I know him still. Um, and you just you know the respect is you don't say nothing. I don't say nothing. Just leave it there. You know what I mean? Um, but yeah, anyway, what else? <coughs> he had a yoga book. So I took it off and I'm looking through it and I thought, you know what, fuck it. And I started busting a bit of yoga in there and I learned the sun, sal- sun salutations, which is like 10 moves. I think it's like a sun salutation A and a B or maybe it's like the moon salutations or something. Anyway, so I started doing that and then I must have like, the way I must have got round so then I was a put on this class. So it swapped basically. So we just dropped the fucking thingy, uh, poetry thing that just fizzled out. Then I got the yoga thing in. A couple of people turned up. And the next man is saying, ah, oh, Michael does that. I remember Michael from Dan South. He said, he's, he's looking for you, he wants to do a thing. He heard you've been doing yoga and that. I'm like, yeah. He's like, yeah, he wants to do it. He used to do it out there. I thought, cool. So basically he like took it over from there. So I'd done the sun salutes to like warm up. And then he took over the full thing, you know what I mean? And it was mad still. I was just telling this to someone the other day. So I've been my son, I can't be asked today. Do you know what I mean? I'm gonna be like, yo, dun dun dun. And I off my door. Like, yo, I won. Like, yo, come, we're gonna do like uh, yoga. I'm like, nah, like, I don't really want to today. Like, come on, we wanna do it. Like, I'm not thinking we'll, we'll do it then. Like, I'm not stopping you. Like, do it. But I was saying to someone, it's like, it's mad. Like, that you, you need that person there. You know, the ones there, which I couldn't see it at the time because I'm still in me, I'm on me. Like, but I would, if someone was to call me like that, I'd do it for them. Do you know what I mean? If I didn't want to, I'd still do it for them. Uh, but then there's, I'm like, yo, man, do it for yourself. Do you know what I mean? Like, I'm trying to get them to like get on their own feet and not thinking I'm doing them a favor, but really and truly, nah, 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 nah. What they needed and me giving them what they needed or what they wanted, you know, they want. Um, or do what they wanted for them to get what they needed. <coughs> Uh, I think that fizzled out. Then man started up a new thing. But I tried to do it like I thought, all right, then cool, what's happening here is I'm starting things and if I don't go, they're fizzling out. Uh, they're, not, they're not carrying on. So I thought, okay, I thought I'll get like a board. Me, Doris, Dave. You know I mean? <laughs> We've, I've gone to them. They're like, yo, come. So what I called this one now, was it? I think it was called Your Space. So what this one was, this was a mad thing. This was, an, oh no, no, we did the next thing. We did the next thing. I don't know what that was called. But what this was, it was basically another poetry thing. Um, and it was set for like an hour. 
or two hours or something. <coughs> but what we do, so it was like exercise as well. So we do like a, either a one word thing, like a, a word association thing. I wasn't really running this, but man wanted me there because I've become the guy running things kind of thing. Running, like not running things like I'm, like I'm running the wing or anything, but like I'm the guy that's like the setup guy, the guy that sets things up and, and does it. But so I did, this wasn't really my idea. But my day is still, like I said, mine's open. I'm taking part in everything to see what's about, see what I can get from it, learn. Because obviously, like, I take part in the situation. And even if I'm going through, like, I didn't like it, my mum's pissing me off, or I'm feeling a bit embarrassed. Da, 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 da. I just think about it late at night. I think, right, that's when I, like, process what's going on. Like, yo, I felt embarrassed there when you did that, you know. Or when did he, what happened with him? Or I think about them. He looks a bit embarrassed there. Da, 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 da. You're always in my group. I might bring that to the groups and, like, see what he was feeling and see if he can, like, grow from that and whatever. And, da, da, da. and like I said, just definitely do it to myself. So I turn up to everything and question everything and whatever. Um, yeah, did like a word association. So next man had to think, and if you think you was out or whatever. And then we did the next one where it was like one line. So it was like a poem, but it was like a, a full line you had to come with, but obviously rhymed with the last man's or carried on, do you know what I mean? But where it is, it must have lasted like naturally about 35, 40 minutes, maybe 45 minutes max. But we felt as if it had to stay thingy. So people wanted to leave, but didn't want to leave. And it was a bit like, hmm, no, nah, I'm just going to watch for now. And it was like, phew, I think we did that once, maybe twice. No, I think we did it twice the second time. So people stayed and people were like, no, I'm not staying, I'm not staying. And it's like, I'm leaving, can't make me stay. <laughs> it's got to a mad thing, but we're getting a bit like, come on, we need to stay. It's time bound, man. Two hours, man, what are you doing? Like, what are you doing? It needs to stay. And uh, yeah, I think people just didn't like that. Like, I don't even know why we were trying to keep them there, really. But we're still learning. And I think we bust it the next week and no one really turned up. There's a few people. Um... So then it was like, and it was like a copy of last week. Cause it's not like through the week we're, we're like bringing new things in. It was just, we're just freestyling really. <coughs> so we let that dead. And then the third time, at the fourth time, sorry. So I think this was actually my idea. So the third one, I don't think that was my idea, but the poetry first time was like my ish idea. Yoga was my ish idea. Third one, I don't think that was mine. Cause I can't really think of anything around it. But the third one, uh, tried to learn from the last time so what I said because there's one guy that's always there with me Darice and I'm like right what we can do do the similar thing but it's just the anything thing from charades to like rapping to poetry to uh, a group to anything it can be anything yeah and it's not time bound I think when it's when it's on like a, when it's crescendoing to, a, to like a high once it gets to like that high and and just like coming over, I think we should just end it. And more it is, leave people wanting more. And any, anyway, it was mad still. So it was hard as well because people are making it hard by make, doing mad, uh, like putting mad, um, like requesting type things. Like so, the first thing we started off with, like, oh, act out an animal. Or I think that was a bit hard. No one to start. So obviously, I think like me or Dries started, like, because Dries was confident to death, and I would. Fake confident, I do it, and people are like, Yo, Marcus is confident. I think he little do you know, I'm, I'm feeling mad embarrassed and that. <coughs> and uh, yeah, or so I think someone might pick an animal for you to for you to do. Do you know what I mean? And obviously, it was encouraging people to do it and to break out of their like shyness. Do you know what I mean? And, and just take it. It was funny, still funny. I had a good time that day. Um, yeah. Very good time. And obviously, like, the next day, like, in Thoughts and Feelings, and people like, yo, do you know what? We did that thing and da 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 But only thing about that thing is they kept saying me, Marx's thing, Marx's thing, when it wasn't my thing. They, obviously, it was my initial idea, but it was, like, me, Dave, and Doris that put it together. Do you know what I mean? So I didn't like that. So as I'm trying to, like, when it got to me, and I'm trying to say, like, yeah, it's not just me, it's me, Dave, Doris, and obviously you guys that have come and made it a thing. No one's hearing it. It's Marx's thing. <laughs> <laughs> Even fucking, I think the reason they might be sat next to me, like, no, man, it's your thing. Like, what? I thought, okay, then cool. But yeah, that was all right. Um, and even the cutting it short, like, because it was every week as well. Um, man, come wait, like, yo, we're doing that thing, yeah? Like, do, 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 do. is it today? It's like, sat there. <laughs> like, is it today? Really trying to make it today? It's like, nah, 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 bro. I'm watching fucking final score. It's tomorrow. <coughs> so yeah, that was hard as nails, man. That was funny. That was good. As you probably can tell by my face, like I really enjoyed that. Um, but it's mad, you know, like people giving up their time, giving up their Sundays and that to come to these things. That's what made me realise certain things as well. Like, yo, do you know what? Man don't need to come. Like when I'm watching people, like, no, you see like celebrities and that, and people are there and you think, I start thinking like, rah, like 
Beyonce and all them lot are up there, like Eminem or whatever, all these like celebrities are up there, but they're only up there because the people in the crowd put them up there. <coughs> like, if nobody turned up and nobody shit, they ain't shit. No one gives a shit if like you've got some talent. Like, but I'm thinking, rah, like, it's the people that make the person. Do you know what I mean? Or the people that boost people up. Like, if you don't have that support there. But yeah, it's obvious, obviously, with like with small business and that. But yeah, it was good, man. And it was a good test for me in terms of like learning like how things like that go and learning from like the last thing. Like, So that's what kind of made me realise that there's no failure. I don't care. I'll do something and fail or lose, but I'll learn for next time. Do you know what I was there? So like, I don't see it as a failure. I don't see it as a loss. I've learned something now. So I know what not to do. I don't just do something and it happened. I do something again and I do it in a loo. Like, no, I do something and I think about it and I think, right, what happened there? Hmm. Yeah, well, I did that all right, and I could have done that better, or shit, you know what, that guy did better than me there, or that one, like, that was funny what they said there, like, why was that, how can I do, like, do you know what I mean, so, like, I'll learn, I'll learn, I'll learn, everything's a learning curve, like, or everything's an opportunity to learn, do you know what I mean, and then it's to, to execute it, so to cap it all off, <coughs> execute what you've learned in your style, in your way. Um, but then it goes to like, obviously she's saying something about like, you know, this shows Marx's process and, and expressing his feelings. So like even something like this, like this pod, do you know what I mean? That's why it's a big thing for me to be able to get it out. Do you know what I mean? It's not just about like bashing people or bashing something. It's just getting onto the pod. Do you know what I mean? Because to be honest, I'm going to be honest with you, I'm feeling really good about doing pods right now. Like even though I've done all these pods, like not all the time I really wanted to and not all the time I felt like, you know, um, like it's going anywhere or doing anything or like, do you know what I mean? Like it's it drifts do you know what I mean to be honest these do, that I'm doing now I'm really enjoying these really enjoying these um, but yeah anyway don't want to digress too much we're going to go on to Irresponsible Alhamdulillah jeez sorry about that Irresponsible Lifestyle so there's one, two, three, four, five, six points so it says Marcus has seven previous convictions which shows his irresponsible lifestyle Marcus has no sorry. Marcus was involved in a couple of violent offences and has carried weapons on numerous occasions. This all provides evidence for the fact that Marcus was leading an irresponsible lifestyle prior to coming to prison. Uh, bear in mind as well when I was first hearing all this shit, it's like irresponsible lifestyle. What are you talking about? Like everyone does it. Like, what? Not realizing that like now, like <laughs> obviously I learned there that like it was an irresponsible lifestyle. Because when, when explaining it to me, and especially when the other cons that had like reached a certain level in terms of how you're thinking and are able to relate it back to me and, and, and challenge me on certain things when I'm saying, but everyone does it. Also, let's give me a little joke. Like, a little joke and they're like breaking that down. Like, because we'll keep breaking, as you say something else, we'll just break that down. So it's like, what? Well, little jokes, so now you're minimising. It's like, no, I'm not minimising. Like, what? Well, well, so I, I didn't do it, do you know what I mean? So, oh, nice denial. So all these like things that I'm saying, they're like labelling it. And it's like, oh, right. So I don't have to repeat what I'm saying like the actual thing I can just say well what it is I will um minimize and I'll 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 deny rather than ha saying what I'm saying do you know what I mean so I'm able to understand what I'm doing <coughs> so I'm saying like little joke and I didn't do it do you know what I mean or you can't blame it on me I just understand that I'm minimizing and I'm denying um so thank you for that um, yeah, so I was thinking about it, like I'm still a big mixed race guy and I've been out of prison for nearly two and a half years now and I haven't been pulled over by the police once, not once, but there'd be a time when I would have, so what's the difference? I'm still the same me, like, I still look the same, you know the ones there? Obviously, not have a fade no more, like, you know what I mean? A bit more, I used to have like a clean shave back then, um, yeah, a bit of stumble on that, a bit of design stumble on that, I mean. But yeah, and it's just, I don't like go off a certain way. I don't do certain things and I don't hang around people that do certain things. So the blame gets thrown onto me or you're guilty by association. Because that's just a thing. Do you know what I mean? So I can go down a persecution like, oh, it's because I'm black or oh, because I'm this, I'm all because I'm that. When it's like, no, I'm still those things. But they were coming and booting the door off because there was trapping going on. Do you know what I mean? They're coming and booting the door off because man are being abed up, you know, the ones there, like they're coming like after me because there's an investigation that's serious someone else has done something like I may have been seen there or they may think I'm there because they know that I chew with certain uh 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 or because there was a tall guy there that must have been me 
You know, the ones there. So they're coming to check on. I'm getting, you know, the ones. I'm about, I'm on, like, I'm getting se- uh, surveillance. I'm around other people that are being surveillance. So then obviously they're stopping and searching, just pulling up, bubble. Do you know what I mean? I'm doing it. Do you know what I mean? But anyway. So when my actions changed, everything's changed. Do you know what I mean? But yeah. Um. Since coming to TC, Marcus has now shown any... Sorry, it must be not that. That means, I think it's not. Marcus has not shown any signs of irresponsible living. He has been a proactive and pro-social member of the community, which I have been. As you know, one of the biggest things that um, we did. So I used to see this guy, yeah, one of them brummies that I used to talk about, that I've spoken about, sorry, that like it changed my lifestyle. No, sorry, that changed my viewpoint. I'm thinking, oh, shit, you can do something else, something different. He used to always be out cleaning. So he's not a cleaner. But it'd always be out, just like, oh, fucking look at this, look at the state, man. Da, 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 throw that in the bin, get some like chamois out, you know, wipe the sides down, blah, 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 clean, 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 gotta keep a clean community, man, a clean community. That's what he's a professor, he was like, you know, like, I think it was 50, 50, 51. Clean community, and I thought, but also, to actually, to add an extra layer to that, it's like doing things like that keeps you off the cleaners. <coughs> so, it keeps off the cleaners and it looks more pro-social. So it was like three thingies. So it's actually keeping a clean community. Doing all bits of cleaning keeps you off the cleaning. If people see you cleaning, so it's like kind of doing it around people, people seeing it. And then um, it looks better for you, basically. So I started doing a bit of cleaning as well. Like I didn't really want to, so I don't really like like wing cleaning. Even though I normally get that job, but I do a shit job. You know what I mean? Um, it's just an easy job in prison. Um, but I was actually like cleaning with thingy, but people kept it clean anyway near enough. Do you know what I mean? People held that responsibility and the cleaners were on it anyway, but I just do that additional bit and people obviously are out on the land. These people are proper looking eagle-eyed to death <clears throat> and bringing it up. But what that did, it's mad. Because I've seen a, um, I seen a YouTube uh, video about responsibility, like why men or why people, I think it was men, but might be why people, why people are so irrespond no it's children for longer and they're saying it's because the people are, are like babying them for longer they're not having no responsibility parents are not allowing their kids to be adults doing adult things by taking responsibility because that's what makes that's the difference between a child and an adult is responsibility one of the main differences anyway in a world where it's not about working and education and that do you know what I mean like if we just lived in a field we didn't have to work or anything we caught our food or grew our food or whatever da, da, da. like the difference would be like the child well it's a parent would have children. And then when you've got a child, you've got to like make sure that child's safe. You've got to make sure that child's clean, fed, uh, watered, clothed or warm. The child's just getting it all done to him. So if that child was a parent to like 30s to getting this stuff done, why are they going to change? Why are they going to start doing that for someone else if they hadn't had kids themselves? For uh, 50, do you know what I mean? They'd just be a child forever. So basically that's what they're saying. And I've been a child. I have been like pampered to death, nurtured to death. Um, originally by my mum. Uh, and then by partners, so I haven't, I didn't have that responsibility um, to, and it, and it changes you. Having responsibility changes you, and it matures you. So just getting around and just doing this bit of cleaning. So it turned like a bit, it turned out like a bit genuine, but there was like two fake things while I'm doing it for like alternative reasons. But then they fizzled away, and it just become a genuine cleaning up thing it wasn't about like whatever it just happened that I was seeing it just happened that people praised me or it happened that people challenged me and it's saying why are you cleaning when I clean or why are you cleaning all the time like when you don't need to what's that about because people might be wise to it thinking yo I know why you're doing it because people aren't dumb like, like I said this, this therapy thing just fucking I'll close you up to death but whatever I just said whatever I said do you know what I mean I can't really remember but it become a proper thing and then anyone else that did it but it's the setting the example like so like he's gone now and I'm still cleaning up. I'm like one of the, like, because people are coming and see me as like a, because my knowledge is up there, I'm like an older in a sense, whether they're older than me or not. I'm like an older in terms of like therapy wise. And then they copy my behaviours and my neighbour's behaviours, my boy that I was on about, because he's doing it as well. Do you know what I mean? There's a couple of us doing it, like do, like a couple of men are just cleaning and that and just getting on with it and not meaning to like do it for any particular reason. Like, something like, man, I go ham, like, proper cleaning out the thingy. Like, no, if food's burst in the microwave, like, proper going ham, so it just looks brand new. You know, the ones there. Like, not really wanting to do it, but it's just, a, it's just you're just doing it now. You know, the ones there. And, like, that responsibility, like, that just matured me. Uh, it's that I didn't realise it at the time. Like, something like that that was outside of the thinking dorm. It was just an action that I was doing that was maturing me. And I was growing from it. 
that I didn't even realize at the time. And I could say my mind was open. Awareness is fully switched on. And I didn't even spot it until he's talking about it. And it just went, oh my days. That's where it was. Because my had responsibilities. It gave us responsibilities. And I never got cleaners. Because like I said, people got voted in for jobs. People get nominated by us, the peers. And then they get like nominated in. Because there might be like seven names up there. And I'd be like, who thinks John should be a um, wing cleaner? And the fucking chairs counting them all up right now, like, do you know what I mean? How many's there? Who thinks uh, Steve should be cleaner? If you get like two votes or, or whatever, I don't know how many votes you get. <coughs> but anyway, yeah. Um, yeah, it's uh, it was big. It was big having that responsibility there. Um, and like I said, being pro social, proactive, being proactive, just being active in a good way. And that was being active in a good way. Uh, and, I, and I tried to carry that on out here. Like, you should see the state of my car sometimes, like, especially, like, down by the uh, passenger side footwell, because I was just, like, eat somewhere and just, just throw the bag down there, like, throw the trash down there, do you know what I mean? Like, obviously, it's not dirty, dirty, but it's just, like, things that need to be in the bin, because I just won't throw anything out the window. I won't throw it, like, out. I can't, it, no, just littering goes through me now. I can't imagine littering. And I used to be a big litter bug. I didn't give a fuck. I didn't give a shit, do you know what I mean? Like, I just did what I did. It was pit smart in the day. Like, no one, no one cares, you know what I mean? But the thought of littering, no, like, nah. So I do need to get some bin bags for the car. So when it gets a bit boom, I can bin it. Do you know what I mean? Because I end up leaving it as well. So I get out of the car and just live my life. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> Mad. Sometimes you have to obviously. Yeah. Anyway, since coming to TC, Marcus has now shown as oh no, I've said that. Marcus recently agreed to extend his pot wash duties by another week to fill the gap before the new resident arrives. Something which shows a real sense of community. Like I didn't want to do that, but. Just did it because every when you come, you have to do a pot wash for like, I don't know if it's a month. They put you on pot wash, and this is heavy, it's heavy duty. I don't want to talk about it, it's heavy. <laughs> There's nothing much just to say about it. To be honest, I don't think I did it like sincerely, I did it to show sin sincerity. Do you know what I mean? Which was insincere, really. Um, but like I said at the beginning, it was different because really, and truly, like I said, when I look back now, like I said, that guy come to me and said, Yo, listen, you and you and uh, your boy, you've changed the game in here, man. You might have like fixed it up properly. Um, because it used to look like that, but really it was like that. But you guys are like that here and like that here. Do you know what I mean? You're keeping it 100 on both sides. Um, so like things like that, like the potwash extension of the word of one of them, it was insincere. Is that I didn't clock at the time? Do you know what I mean? So you think it's just cheat codes and that. And obviously, I was still more road than now, than I am now, proper. Anyway, Marcus, in its offence, provides clear evidence for this risk factor. Um, Marcus has volunteered to be the res art rep for the community. Res art was a uh, resident art, and it, it, I don't know what they did really. I think they like cross community games, um, did like a big run, some fun stuff. It never happened, it never happened the whole time I was there. Um, something which shows a responsible way of thinking and behaving and it is a role which will offer him lots of learning. So it was something for me to learn from because I'd never organised anything before. So I had to like put these meetings on. And what I decided to do is to keep everyone updated. I'd keep putting like like sheets up to little bare sheets up on the boat. So I'd have like the football there and everything that everyone wanted. <clears throat> Probably initial meetings. And then like who's going to be in it and who's the top of that? Because then I started delegating. Like I've never delegated before. Um, so I think I was showing some good managerial like qualities there actually. You know what? Because... Okay, I've just thought about something. Um, but anyway, yeah. So, yeah, delegating and this and that. like, I, I, And then having mini meetings for like, so just the football guys are coming or just the fucking whoever guys coming or whatever. Because so I remember the football was the hardest one because I wasn't into football them days there. And they were like, I put a guy in control. Oh, it was the games guy again who got it stuck on him by the Wolves kid. Like, he's just entitled to death because he wanted to be the head guy, but it's like, but I ain't chose you, I've chose him. Like, just stick with the, just be happy with the decision. Because that's what it is. It's about, not about trying to, everything that happened on the TC, it's not about kicking off or whatever. It's understanding why you don't like it. Because it's all about working on your negatives. It's understanding why you don't like it or why you want something different. Do you know what I mean? Understanding that bit and then taking it a step back. Do you know what I mean? Like, where's it come from? Like, Oh, it happened when I was like five years ago. Oh, taking it a bit further back. Oh, when I was 10 years ago. Oh, it's a bit back. Oh, it happened when I was like six. Oh, it happened when I was four, actually. And this and that. Da, da, da. And that's the core bit that's like why you can't deal with these things later on in life. Do you know what I mean? It's just expanded out. So that was the work for him to do, but there's just no work for him to do in his mind. Do you know what I mean? He needed to look like that was upsetting him. <clears throat> 
And what he didn't like, just on the, the surface, was that he was put in the B team because there was an A team and a B team. Do you know what I mean? Um, and he didn't like it because it was like just like all the top stars, popular guys kind of thing in a sense, were like in that team. And everyone else would have been in that team. Um, and it, it just didn't like it, which I understand. But like I said, the work would be from that, would be for, <coughs> so I tried to come with a compromise. Both of you work together. Maybe have some mixed cross teams. Do you know what I mean? Because he was making it out like it's not fair that I'm and this and these guys or whatever. Da, da, da. When in the end, all it took for him to be happy was for him to be put on a B, uh, A team. So it was like, but what about everybody else that you're saying it's not fair for them? It's, do you know what I mean? So yeah. Um, but yeah, so that was good. I did get some learning from that. And the last one is impulsive decision making. This behaviour response was evident in Marcus's index offence. Marcus chose to take a knife to a club and subsequently ended up using this knife to attack two other people he felt threatened by during the night. Uh, in his oasis, Marcus self-reported that he has poor decision making, which I did. And now I believe I have good decision making. And the reason my life was so terrible before is because I consistently made bad decisions. The decisions are good in terms of the road thing. But in terms of like regular life, these were bad decisions that ended culminated in me being in prison and being round who I was being round and doing what I was doing. Do you know what I mean? And just like I said, it's like demolishing my own life and my own mental health. Whereas now I'm able to make good decisions and it's leading on to things. As I said at the beginning, I've got like a certain path in life that I'm going. I don't need certain people around me. So that's a decision not being around them. So I could decide to be around them. Like I said before, I could decide to be around these people and then that decision of being around these people ends me up in, like I said, now I'm on people's surveillance, police's surveillance, they think I'm doing something. Maybe because I'm around these people, like police come and I get embroiled in something and I've lost my job. So now, because of that decision now, I have to make a decision that how do I make money? Like I can't get another job, I'm trying to make jobs, uh, get jobs not getting them. It's drugs now, I'm selling drugs. So I've, that's another decision. You know what I mean? Or like I could be around them and then that people pull up and then it's just, you know what I mean? So the decision is, Allow it, <laughs> basically. <coughs> um, time in therapy. Mr. Brown achieved his goal of completing therapy as required. During his time in therapy, his attendance in the therapy spaces and his engage engagement was to a good standard. Mr. Brown undertook a number of job roles on the community during his time in therapy and he was able to undertake these to the standard required. I do need to remember what jobs I had on there, actually. Uh, and reflected on the learning and development each offered him. Mr. Brown was successful in his application uh, to the role of healthcare champion. In this role, Mr. Brown has been attending another community and offering support and advice to them regarding their health and well-being. This is something which Mr. Brown has undertaken very well. Mr. Brown engaged in a responsible lifestyle throughout his time in therapy and as far as, far as the staff team are aware, which is true. Um, the only thing I did do that wasn't thing yet is I had a USB stick. Was it USB? Yeah, USB. Because sometimes it's a memory card, but it wasn't a memory card this time. Even though I had a memory card. I just think he rubbed it. The fucking guy with the fucking the football team, the games, the guy with the Wolves kid. That's when I was going to absolutely go thingy. Uh, but that's the only thing. And I just thought, fuck it. I'm just watching films. I'm watching films, I'm watching music videos, and I'm watching... Um, Films, music videos, and box sets. Bear box sets. I mean, oh, that's not going to look good. <laughs> and bear, you know what I mean? So that's the only thing. Uh, which obviously they didn't know about because it would have been a big thing and da 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 Like, forget all that. <coughs> but my boy, he never really indulged in it. Like, he kept it almost 100%. Obviously, buried it him sometimes and blah, 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 blah. But, like, not that much. Um. Da, 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 da. Mr. Brown explored his draw, what? Explored his draw to living irresponsibly prior to coming to prison. Explored his draw. I don't know what that means. He spoke in a small group about his low self esteem and how this, a result of poor attachment to significant caregivers early on, propelled him to lead a life which was characterized by daily cannabis use and low level antisocial behaviors. Mr. Brown identified that his use of violence in his offending history was self-preservative in nature, a response to him feeling scared, threatened, embarrassed uh, and shame. He was unable to manage and cope with these negative feelings, again, due to limited experience of containing authority figures to support this 
And so he engaged in physical responses to these emotional threats. So I don't know, somebody, I think there's some spelling mistakes here. But anyway, when Mr. Brown arrived in therapy, his ability to cope with his emotions was limited. He presented in a contained and controlled manner, which appeared devoid of any real emotional expression. Over time, Mr. Brown learned to be able to tolerate his own feelings as a result of his development of relationships with the community, his group, and individuals on the community. Mr. Brown is now able to identify his own feelings and to acknowledge and speak about them. Mr. Brown is also able to recognise when other people are experiencing emotions and to not become reactive to these. He has shown an ability to support others to identify and understand their feelings, although this has been somewhat lacking in more recent times. Mr. Brown is able to self-reflect and think about his actions now, as opposed to just reacting to his feelings without consideration. And that's true. Do you know what I mean? Actually, let's have a look at that again. Just able to self-reflect and think about his actions now as opposed to just reacting. So yeah, like I say, consequential thinking, good decision making. Like obviously that's that's all all that section there. Um it's, it's just self-management, that whole bit. Do you know what I mean? That's, that's how you're able to self-manage by being able to like reflect afterwards and even in the moment, like that's when it's better, like when it becomes a reflection, like you do something and you think about it afterwards, like six hours later, then you do something, you think about it four hours later, and you do something, you think about it an hour later, and you do something, and you think about it like half an hour later, and you do something, and as you're doing it, you're thinking about it kind of thing um and obviously brought yourself up to up to speed and up to the time but yeah hopefully you enjoyed this episode if you made it this far like comment share subscribe you know it or you know you know man loves this thing hey um, and yeah and it benefits and it helps um but yeah that's it stay tuned for the next one marcus deacon q last podcast